Hello again. I want to introduce you to my wife, Linda. Linda and I have been friends for a long time, and Linda and I have been married for a long time. Hello, it's good to be with you and greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Jack and I have been married since 1968. We have two sons, two daughters, and two wonderful grandchildren. Linda is going to give you some information about how you can get in touch with us and also about how you can obtain more information about this or other messages that are available as well as other materials available about our ministry. You can go to our website at www.pureriver.info where you will find a list of other available messages and you can email us at park at pureriver.info with your comments and prayer requests. We would love to hear from you. Welcome back as we continue our Bible study on the rewards of Jesus' disciples. The fourth reward we want to look at is that the disciple of Jesus is blessed to participate together with Jesus in His ministry. All of us are faced with the difficult questions of life about why are we here? What is our purpose? To what cause should we give ourselves in order to serve our own generation? But God Himself is best at answering this question. As we submit to Jesus and He makes clear the will of God for our lives, He Himself understands what giftings He's given us, both naturally and spiritually, so that God Himself understands how best we can serve our own generation according to His will. Disciples of Jesus are actually empowered by the Holy Spirit in order to minister to the needs of suffering people. Jesus said, As my Father sent me, so I send you. The fifth reward is that Jesus' disciples are blessed in every area of their lives. In our first message, Jesus delivered to His, his uh, disciples the Sermon on the Mount. In the first nine verses of the Sermon on the Mount, all nine of them begin with the statement of Jesus, You are blessed. God knows how to bless every area of our lives. Sometimes human life can be a complicated tangle of responsibility and problems. But the wonderful thing about being a disciple of Jesus is that He knows how to bless us in every area of our lives. He can bring peace and order and blessing to our lives. He blesses us spiritually. He blesses us psychologically. He blesses us physically. He blesses us in our family life. He blesses us in our career and in our financial life. He blesses us in our social life and in our, in our relationships with other people. God even blesses our recreational life. He is a blesser who knows how to bless us in every area. The fifth reward of being a disciple of Jesus is that He has promised us that He will comfort us with rest for our souls when we're in times of trouble. Sometimes life's not easy. All of us experience sometimes difficulty and pain and problems, heartaches and disappointments. This world is full of trouble because we're in mortal bodies and because we live in a sinful world. But Jesus has said to us in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28, verses 28 through 30, Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. When we come together and yoke up with Jesus, the wonderful thing is that all we are responsible for is what's possible. We leave the impossibilities up to God. God is the great burden bearer and the giver of rest for the soul for His disciples. The seventh of the rewards that we're going to look at is that disciples of Jesus are blessed in eternity for their obedience to Him in this life. In His Sermon on the Mount, Jesus promised His disciples, Great is your reward in heaven. I want to read to you something that the Apostle Paul said as he gives us a glimpse into the way God views uh, time and space from heaven's perspective. From 2 Corinthians chapter 4, Paul says, Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. 
For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Disciples of Jesus always have the finish line of this life in view. We realize that our life on earth is temporary. It is our life in heaven that is eternal, that lasts forever. Jesus has told us to store our treasures up in heaven where they cannot be corrupted nor can they be stolen. Jesus has promised his, to his disciples in John chapter 14 and verses 1 through 3 these wonderful thoughts. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Jesus Christ is coming to earth again, not as a lamb to suffer and die for the sins of mankind, but as the Lion of Judah as the Lord of Lords, as the King of Kings, to reign forever and ever. The New Testament ends with these wonderful promises from Jesus for His disciples. This is from the last chapter of the Bible, Revelation chapter 22, verses 12 and verse 20. Jesus said, Behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to His work. Surely, I am coming quickly. And we add with the Apostle John, Amen, even so, come Lord Jesus. I want to conclude this series by praying a simple prayer with you. Our Father, I pray for every person within the sound of my voice that you will give them grace to learn to become a disciple of Jesus so that your blessing may come upon them in every area of their lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. It's been a great pleasure to be with you in this series of messages. May God bless you richly.